How about shows like Laverne and Shirley, Happy Days? Gary Marshall, one of our very favorite directors, celebrated in a new uh, new film that John Scheinfeld has put together. It's fantastic to see you again. Now you've done the Sergio Mendes, and now you moved on to our pal and buddy, Gary Marshall. How are you, John? Uh, good, Carlos. Your interests and mine keep intersecting. I, I think that's <laughs> great. Uh, well, just for, the, for a second, the Sergio thing, the, a couple of days after I saw you, we premiered up at the Santa Barbara Film Festival. We got two standing ovations, one for the film and one for Sergio, who performed three songs after. So that was great. But now, like most films in the business, it's been uh, postponed till the fall. Yeah. So not going to come out. Yeah. So can we see it anywhere or just are you just doing the, the, the film circuit? No, we were going to uh, premiere it in April or May in theaters and then was going to go streaming and everything is just on hold. So we've made no deals. Yeah. So not till the fall sometime. So you've turned your attention to Gary Marshall. Tell me a little bit about the project. What motivated you to do this? Sure. Well, uh, I'd always been a fan of Gary's. I've met him twice. I didn't know him well, but I'd met him twice when I interviewed him for other documentaries. Uh, and the family had expressed some interest in having a documentary made about him. So uh, I came up with a, a vision for the film, which really would focus on the uh, humor, the heart, and the humanity in, in both his work and in his life. They love that. And so we were trying to figure out, all right, how are we going to get this funded? <laughs> and uh, then it, it occurred to us, well, wait a second. You know, his shows propelled ABC to number one in the ratings back in the 70s, Happy Days, The Vernon Shirley, Mork and Mindy. Uh, and then when Gary made the transition to directing feature films, of his 18 films, nine were for Disney, which owns ABC. So we thought, well, so we went to ABC, sold it. We've been working on it for a year now. And I have to say that uh, the spirit of Gary, the spirit of his work is, as I say, it's, it, it, it will make you laugh, it'll touch your heart, and it'll uh, allow you to leave feeling great. And I think the time that we're living in right now, we need all of that. Absolutely. And, you know, he, uh, he was a frequent guest on the KTLA Morning News, and we got to know him pretty well. And, and he loved so many of our people there. And we had such a great relationship. And he loved to smile. He loved to make people happy. And truly, his work reflected that. Oh, it really did. You look at his, uh, his uh, worldview, and he only saw the best in people. And he saw the uh, upbeat, the inspirational. And uh, I think some critics would criticize him for that because it wasn't dark and edgy and gritty and real. But he, he famously said, uh, I never wanted to change the world. I wanted to entertain the world. And, and he did that extremely well. And, you know, he also, uh, in the community, he had his own little theater there in the, in the Valley that was very popular. And, and it was a beginning place for a lot of great actors. Well, his mother started taking him to Broadway shows when he was about six years old, and they would sit up in the balcony during a matinee, and he absolutely fell in love with theater. He didn't come back to it till much later. But the truth is, he was really a, 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 a good talent agent uh, for starting with his TV shows and then going through most of his movies. The number of people that he discovered uh, or elevated their careers is just extraordinary. Everybody from Henry Winkler to Anne Hathaway to Julia Roberts. It's really a very long list. But I want to go back to something that you said is that, uh, but he was one of your favorite people and stuff. He was beloved by everybody. Yeah. I have to tell you, you've been around a long time. You know, it's not uh, un unheard of to have people make some snarky remark about another person in show business or about their recent work, you know? Work on this project for a year, uh, honestly, I can tell you, nobody had a bad word to say about Gary. He was so beloved by everybody he knew and worked with, above the line, below the line, it didn't matter. And I, I think that's worth celebrating. It absolutely is. And, he, you know, his, his positive attitude was, and his joy of life was infectious. I love being around him. And, and, of course, Penny was a beneficiary as well. I mean, they loved each other. They worked together. Tell me about that relationship. Well, it was a very interesting thing. You know, he was the big brother, and I think he felt responsible for everybody. Uh, Barbara, Gary's uh, wife, uh, uh, told me a story once that somewhere in about 1974, just around the time Happy Days was getting on the air, she said, 
uh, his, Gary's mother said to Gary, you know, your sister needs a job. You better do something about that. <laughs> and uh, eventually we have Laverne and Shirley. So he uh, was very much looking out for his sister. And I think they were, they were very close right up to uh, the time Gary died. You know, the, the beautiful thing about his work, it, so much of what I love about him was that he, he captured my youth in, his, in a lot of his movies and, and TV shows. And it reminded me of those kind of innocent days. And, and I kind of longed for that. And I think the audience longed for it. And he delivered every single time. Well, you know, Happy Days came on in 1974. This was after the turbulence of the 60s, uh, the division in the country over the Vietnam War, and then the Watergate uh, uh, controversy was still going on. And I think America was ready for a breath of fresh air and a little relief from all of the intensity. And Happy Days came on the air in January of 74 and just exploded and ran for 11 seasons. And I think in an odd way, we're in a similar period now. And I, I honestly feel that our special is the perfect antidote to COVID-19. For everything that we've had to endure uh, for this, uh, as well as maybe the darkness and the division coming out of Washington the last three and a half years, this is just a chance to step back and just laugh and have a good time. And that was Gary. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. a good time. Sunday, Monday, happy days. I mean, those, I mean you know, uh, you know, Laverne and Shirley, the whole, the openings of those things. and. But these things are such a part of our growing up years that it's fantastic that you're doing this film. Now, uh, where can we see it and when is it going to be done? Because we're, we're all dying to see it. Oh, well, great. The, uh, it's called The Happy Days of Gary Marshall. Wonderful. And uh, it is on ABC, uh, prime time from 8 to 10 p.m. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, May 12th. This wow. is, incidentally, the first... Uh, entertainment documentary that ABC's put on in prime time in probably 20 or 25 years. Uh, the few docs that do show up in prime time come out of the news division. So, you know, bless them for trying to do something a little different and, uh, and taking a chance. And uh, I'm very, very proud of this show. And I think it reflects the spirit of Gary. Well, actually, I have to tell you, uh, I wanted Gary to be part of this, but obviously he had passed away and we didn't have that opportunity. But he recorded an audiobook version of his written autobiography. And the family allowed us access to the master tapes. So when people watch the show tomorrow night, they will hear Gary helping to tell some of his own story in that Bronx accent with his particular sense of humor. Well, congratulations to you for pulling this off and, and thanks to Disney for their support and, and thanks to you for putting it all together. I can't wait to see it. John Scheinfeld, congratulations, that's fantastic. Can't wait to see it. Thanks for having me, Carlos.